Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this week's Furman Football Weekly with head coach Clay Hendricks. Paladins coming off of a 23-13 win at Mercer back on Saturday, and the new polls released just a short time ago. Furman is up to 13th in the coaches' poll, now number 12 in the media poll. The final regular season game kicks off on Saturday here at Paladin Stadium against Wofford. More about that coming up in just a bit. Joining coach today are players uh, tied in Ryan Miller and defensive lineman Matt Sachovka. And as we always do, I'll ask <coughs> Clay Hendricks to make an opening statement and then we'll get rolling. Hey, thank you, Dan. Again, appreciate you being here. Certainly excited to get a win uh, against a really good Mercer team Saturday night, Saturday late afternoon down in Macon. I uh, thought uh, probably maybe – Maybe one of our better games of the year, certainly, I think, in all phases. And I think it was going to certainly take that. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think two teams that were maybe leading the country, tied and leading the country, and, you know, turnovers, uh, you know, produced. And, uh, you know, a game with no turnovers. Don't see much of that anymore. But just, uh, just a tough, tough football game. And I, I knew uh, it was going to take a great effort from our team. And uh, I just felt like, you know, the physical team, the most physical team was going to have the best chance to win the game. And I felt like we were that. You know, we talked about being able to run the ball offensively and stopping the run. And I think those were the keys, uh, their inability to run the football against us. Uh, you know, I think maybe had as many sacks as they'd given up all year. Um, you know, number of tackles for loss. And I think flip side is we we had no sacks and no turnovers on offense. Uh, so, you know, a lot, a lot of guys played some good football. Um, you know, I think our defensive line had a phenomenal day. Uh, I think we did a uh, – I thought our defensive coaches, bo both sides of the ball, had great plans. Uh, I thought we did a good job of keeping the quarterback in the pocket, which I felt like would give us an opportunity to maybe get after him a little bit more. Uh, I think that was certainly key. And then, you know, Ian Williams, you look at what he did knocking those kicks through, how clutch he's been in that, that regard. And I think, Ryan, we only punted twice, but I think down one on the one and one, you know, inside the 10 there late in the game without giving, you know, their guy a chance to return one. Um, you know, so, you know, obviously uh, really proud of our team and uh, excited about this season. And it's kind of fun. I think one of the great things about – FCS football is uh, when you can put you in a position when you don't know when the season's going to end. And uh, you just try to take it and run with it and enjoy the moment and enjoy the present. And so we need to have a great week of practice. Certainly got a, a Wofford team coming here that's clearly playing their best football of the year. Uh, I re really, they're about where I thought they would be. Uh, you know, back when they asked us to pick and vote, I, I knew they had a bunch of kids coming back and uh, I thought they'd have a chance to have a good fo football team. They're playing that way. Uh, Schedule was really front end loaded, um, you know. Where ours was kind of back in. I guess we got some of it a little bit throughout, but uh, but again, they're playing their best football, and I think we are too. So uh, it'll be senior senior day here, and I don't know. Senior day's a little different than it used to be. Uh, I think we'll have some guys probably that'll that'll be recognized Saturday. They'll actually be playing next year. Uh, I've just kind of left all that up to them, and so it's a little bit different than it used to be between. You know, COVID years and and uh, you know some other opportunities we have for some guys to come back. So I think we got a chance to have a great core of our guys back, but we will honor those guys that'll uh, choose to you know walk with our guys on Saturday. Uh, but uh, but with that, you know, any questions you may have, uh, Coach, as you. <coughs> part of your defensive success this year is forcing turnovers. So to have the kind of game day you did kind of speaks a lot to what your defense did and. Kind of a second part of that question. While well, you didn't have any turnovers, you had some fourth downs on offense that you missed, kind of put your defense in a tough spot. I think they only allowed, after those three, they allowed one first down on the on the fake punt, and that was it. Uh, can you speak to what they did after being put in those positions? Well, you know, really, I thought we only really put them, I thought, in a bad spot the one time, the first one when we got stopped. And, um, you know, and but but absolutely, they came back really – I thought we created a turnover. Still think it was a turnover, but they they overturned it. But then we got a stop and got the ball back. Uh, you know, the other two fourth downs certainly uh, we responded. I think anytime you anytime you do that, um, I got a lot of confidence in Ian as a as a kicker, particularly kicking the longer kicks. But you know, the the win was a factor in the game the other night, and even on the kickoff, some of the decisions, things we made. 
Um, but no, they just just kept responding, you know. And and really, I mean, golly, you take away probably the deep ball, you know, the one deep ball they hit, only a couple of things. I just, you know, to, to hold that group that nobody's done uh, to to what we did uh, was phenomenal. Speaks, you know, volumes for you know our defensive staff and our players. Had a great week of prep. Um, and certainly, it, it paid off for us. Um, there was a couple of times in that game where I think they were really momentum boosters for, for Furman and probably deflating moments for them. He mentioned, the, Scott mentioned this, the fake punt. Uh, a couple of plays later, I think that the, the ball's tipped up in the air, their quarterback catches it, and, it, and he loses 15 yards. And I also think the block field goal prior to the half. Would you just speak about those two plays and how – I think that was demoralizing for them and, and just talk about your defense, how they responded to the fake punt. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I think the fake punt and we went – I think they went three and out after that. And, you know, obviously we were in a situation where we should have, we should have had the ability to stop it. We didn't get it done, but we, we went three and out of them, you know, after that. Uh, you know, the field goal after giving up the return for the half and – you know, I just – I didn't – you know, put that on me. I did not want to kick it to number one. Uh, we didn't make a very good kick, you know, and, and he didn't tell you that too. We kicked it right to the guy. And then we didn't even cover it very well. They had a couple of throws to get down there. And, you know, we had a couple of timeouts. I literally told our guys I was going to call the first one. And I said, so I'm going to call this one. I said, but I'm not going to call the second one. And, uh, you know, and – you know, it's not like we're a sophisticated group, you know, when it comes to what we're doing rush. I mean, we're doing a great job of getting great push in the middle. And, man, go watch that clip. You're talking about just effort of guys just getting there. And I was literally standing there, you know, about, about even with the ball and boy, uh, just unbelievable push. I just – I keep thinking we're going to get one of those that bounce off to us that we can pick up and run with. <laughs> we hadn't had the ability to do that, to do that yet. Um, and then, you know, obviously the defle- you know, I mean the deflected pass. Well then we went through a a target that I, c- I couldn't believe got called. Uh we went through that, but but certainly that was a that was a big play. And you know, I don't I don't know. In- offensively anytime you have negative plays, uh we put them behind the chains quite a bit. And you know, one got turned over on the on the defensive hold, uh when we had a chance to get them really backed up. So yeah, I mean the, the games like that, those plays like that are huge in them. You know, tackles for losses. Certainly, our stops on fourth down. Uh, you know, and and I, you know, I thought coach called good plays. I mean, I think Josh catches that pass nine out of ten times. I just have that much confidence in him. And then, you know, the other two. I mean, the Shiflet carry. We got a really good scheme. We just got one guy that didn't get his guy. And uh, but I, that's how those games are. You know, and it was about winning one on ones. And you know, certainly on the fourth down, we didn't do a good enough job. But certainly, we won our share. You know, defensively all night. Matt, I don't think that I've seen a defensive line get as much attention in a game since the Rams had the fearsome foursome, and that's before <laughs> you were born. But not just everybody across the board, but that was quite a half that Jack Barton had because he was, he recovered a fumble that was overturned. He was called for a spearing that was head that was overturned, and then he blocked the field goal. He got mentioned more than Tyler Huff in the first, <laughs> first half. But I mean, y'all, it, it, you know, in a, in a year where most of the time a lot of defensive linemen just impede the blockers to free the linebacker, y'all are making a lot of plays yourself. So tell me about that. Um, well, first, I just want to say how proud I, proud I am of uh, Jack Barton. Um, you know, he started the year as the second D lineman. JJ went down. And just to see where he's come in the off season, he was working his tail off, getting bigger. And, I mean, everything just came to fruition. Just him, all these plays he's making, he's having a good time. He's playing free. And he's so much fun to watch right now. And he brings, you know, a big piece to just playing with me and Cujo. Me and Cujo are kind of the big guys. And Jack is the nimble, fast, twitch guy that gets to make the plays. So, um, I mean, it's just awesome to see this group, especially the young guys, come together. And K. Lou said he thought – our Coach Lewis said he, he thought Mercer thought they could run the ball on our uh, two deep because they're a younger group, and they didn't. So just as a whole group, you know, doing what we do, it was, it was awesome to see throughout the whole year, really. Ryan, as a guy who knows something about 
catching the ball and, and, and <clears> doing <throat> what, what you're supposed to do as a receiver. Just interested in your thoughts on what we've seen about the, the maturation and, and the continued improvement of Joshua Harris. Yeah. Because he, he had obviously a <clears throat> phenomenal, phenomenal game on Saturday from your standpoint as mm -hmm. a teammate and, and seeing him from last year to this year. Just your thoughts on him. Um, yeah, I love Josh Harris. And just to, to see the way he's grown throughout this year is incredible. Um, we've been waiting for him to have a game like that. And it was exciting to see for sure. Um, he's a big playmaker. Um, we know what he can do. He has all the skills, all the tools to be a great receiver. Um, and he is, and he continues to grow each and every week. And I'm just proud to, to watch the game that he had. So he really stepped up for us this week. Coach, obviously there's – 150, 100 plays in the ball game or whatever. But looking back on it, uh, how much of a tone was set on the first snap when Bryce McCormick blitzes and gets in there and throws him to the ground? I mean, that just kind of that's kind of how the day went. Yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, kind of the emphasis. All, you know, they heard me say it a few times. It was about attacking. You know, and I think, you know, I think a little bit of the nature of who they are, what they do, can get people to, you know, a little bit tentative just because of all the stuff that you're looking at sometimes and. Uh, and, you know, they were taking a shot. They were going to take a shot first play. So they were going to be aggressive and, and certainly great call by coach. And then, yeah, I, I think that was big. I, you know, it's funny that that's kind of how the game went, I thought, you know, by and large. Um, you know, and I think, you know, even offensively, I felt like, you know, we were in attack mode. You know, I thought, you know, we felt like we left some points on the field, you know, the way we moved it, you know, but to be able to, you know, get, get, get the yards we had, be able to run the football and do the things that we did. Um, and again, I just think, you know, that's how you have to win those games like that. And, and again, I think they've gotten a lot of people on their heels, particularly early in games, uh, just because they have been a big play, you know, producing group. And, um, but, but certainly that play, that play was huge. Um, Matt, this has been sort of a kind of a revenge tour for you guys <laughs> um, this season. Has there been an extra bit of motivation? Because... Uh, the two times pr previous you played Chattanooga didn't go so well. Two times previous played Mercer didn't go so well. And in the East Tennessee game last year didn't go so well. So just speak to that. This team playing with a bit of a chip on its shoulder? Um, no no doubt about it. Um, but I think it's, it's easy to have a chip on your shoulder when you watch the film from the last two years and all those games and you realize we weren't the aggressor. And that's not what we're about, especially as a defense. I know as an offense that's not what they're about. So... Um, just kind of showing everybody we're a new team. Like, you know, this isn't this isn't what we put on tape the last two years. We're better than that, so for sure. Right at the start of that game, mm -hmm. it would be an understatement to say that your activities weren't tightly monitored. <laughs> and I just wonder, it's, of course, those of us who watched all year, we sort of go, just wait. Mm -hmm. There'll be that time. Yeah. But I just wondered how, he, how you handle that. Do you dawdle a little bit and then – come alive and, and, and hit them or do or, I mean what do you do you just bide your time or do you keep I mean you could easily get frustrated mm -hmm. when you're being turned every which way but loose how do you handle that because this is something that you're obviously very familiar with yeah um I I, th I would say I just do my job um for the most part there are some times of frustration but you know I'll do I'll do anything for the team to win um team comes first it's not about it's not about how much, how many stats I can pull, put up. It's about the team win at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, I just go out there and, you know, make plays for my team when I can. And when I'm not, I'm blocking as best I can. So team comes first always in my mind. Clay, every program these days, it seems, wants to hype its strength and conditioning and the trend. And we saw it at Mercer. You go to the fourth quarter, you got the strength coach on the video screen, you know, yelling and screaming and showing guys doing workouts and everything. Marcus asked Josh Harris after the game about the touchdown catch where he took the hit and bounced off the two defenders and went on and scored. So he asked him how he did that. And he had a one word answer, Bernardi. <laughs> From your from your standpoint, yeah. the, the conditioning at this point of the season. Well, I, I think for Josh, that's probably the biggest difference between Josh last year. He was a really good player last year, but but you know I think he gained 20, 25 pounds in the off season. <laughs> he was skinny, um, you know. And, and I've said this, you know, I see Josh. I've seen Ryan do that a lot, you know. 
just split guys and two guys would hit him kind of bounce off of him. And, and I've seen Josh to do that at practice and some different things, but I've been kind of waiting to see him get that opportunity. Certainly he's got incredible hands. Uh, he is competitive and, and his leaping skills are, are outstanding. But, um, but now I, I think Josh is one of those guys that bought into what Coach Bernardi was, you know, selling. You know, when he got here and, uh, you know, just the work he's put in the offseason, I, I think you see that really on our whole football team. And, you know, you guys have been around here. You know, Andre Andre changed the whole culture of this whole mm -hmm. department, this whole university, certainly not just our football team. And I, I've watched it with other teams that I used to watch come in there and, and train, and now you walk them in there, they're just a different demeanor to them and, you know, what he's brought. and. And you know the people that are working there with him, and certainly that's been huge. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure anywhere at any program there's not a more important position than that position. And um, certainly we're thrilled to have him with us. And you know he works our guys like crazy, but man, they love him and they bought into it. And and just I think from a football perspective, just the you know the detail aspect of it. There's just so much carryover in how he trains them, and, and particularly, and then how it. You know, carries over particularly into our sport. You know, and, and the ability to handle the details, and uh, that's certainly been a huge part of our success this year. I'm, I'm positive of that. Ryan, we've uh, heard Coach Hendricks speak many times about what makes you a good receiver, and mm -hmm. you know, we take that on face value based on our track record with him, and he knows what he's <laughs> talking about. How would you describe? your abilities as what makes you an effective receiver and if you can suspend a little modesty yeah. and, and be honest with us what makes you a very effective receiver I think for my I guess my strengths are I'm a little bit bigger than most receivers in this league I guess um, I'm more physical I think I pride myself in being a physical receiver um, but I got to give credit to coach Burnett too um, you know, he came in here, you know, we've worked some blocking stuff, but we mainly focus on receiving stuff. And he's definitely helped up my game a little bit, um, just route running. Um, also, just what I can do without the ball, too, um, blocking-wise. But definitely, Coach Verna, I give credit to Coach Verna, you know, for making me a better receiver. Um, but, yeah, that's just, you know, I think that that's my strengths. Yak yards, for sure is what I can do best. So that's what I pride myself on. Hey, Hunter, I'll add to that a little bit because I've been asked that question by a few teams that have come through here. I mean, we've had as many guys come through as ever. I think, uh, to me, uh, he's got really, really good hands. Mm -hmm. He's really, really competitive. He's a really explosive athlete. I mean, you can go look at the weight room numbers. They're kind of – he's got kind of freaky weight room numbers. I don't know if we've ever time Ryan in a 40, and I always tell people this, but I've never seen anybody catch him in a game that we've played. You know, it's just his ability to accelerate, and I think it's just a rare combination. And, you know, he's willing to do the, the dirty work, you know, that we've tried, you know, we've used him. He's a tight end, but really he's kind of a hybrid guy. And, you know, he'll, he'll be a slot receiver at the, next, at the next level. But I just think it's a rare combination, really, of all those things. And, um, and again, it's not like people don't know where he's at or they're not looking for him. We maybe hit him for a couple of years, but – the, the 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 words out on him. So he's been he's been a really productive guy for us, and he was a great special teams guy during his career. We haven't used him as much in that role, you know. Particularly, I think a year ago, we just felt like we wanted to protect him in some ways. Uh, but I know that's something he he was really good at, particularly early in his career. Uh, Matt, or got a two part question. Uh, have you ever been on a team that's blocked six kicks? <laughs> no. And. Um, Best I can tell when I've looked at replays and stuff, it's kind of like you and Jack in the middle. And do y'all ever talk about, hey, so and so's doing this, so maybe you'll get this, or, or like, is it that detailed, or do you just kind of have the same uh, uh, way you, you go about it each week? Um, so every Friday, we have a swarm meeting as a defense, and we pull up uh, the team's field goal unit. And we kind of see, you know, what side we like. We talk about it. We see, you know, kind of how their stances are. But for the most part, we pretty much line up the same every week. But it, it's funny you ask, you say that because when I blocked a couple versus Western and Sanford, Jack, Jack Barron was like, Matt, let's switch sides. Let me get in your gap. Let me get in your gap. But after the game, I was like, Jack, dude, let's switch sides. You're, you're getting all the blocks now. So, uh, But Cujo, Cujo Cameron Coleman is the unsung hero of it all. Big zero, anchors the middle. He lines up on the guard. 
me and Jack are kind of in the gaps, and he takes all the, the heavy lifting for us, and he, he knocks them back. So Cujo doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but what he does for me and Jack is, is awesome on that field goal block unit. But to answer your question, never been on a team with six block kicks, and we're not done yet. We're trying to get to seven. So, <laughs> um, Matt, I'm not going to give you a break. So could you talk about – I think you've been on this defense every year that Coach Vaughn has been a defensive coordinator. Uh, could you talk about his – progression as a defensive coordinator and, and where he is now to, to maybe where he started? Um, I actually had this conversation with a couple of the guys I played with um, that graduated this past weekend. And his first two years, I think Coach Vaughn will tell you, um, I don't think he was as aggressive as, as he is now. You know, I think he was kind of finding his, his style and his scheme. But I think you look at him the last couple of years, and, I mean, it's, it's been incredible. He really his, – his whole motto is, like, he lets the defense be ours, or I don't know if I said that right, but he lets us make it ours. Like, it's the player's defense. Like, he's like, go play hard for me, but this is your guys' stuff. GBG, the get back gang, that's our culture. And he's just fed into that. He lets us be the aggressor. He calls it aggressive, and that's how we play. I was just thinking about the transition of this team, Clay, and from, from the game against Samford – when it seemed like a bad call, whether it was rattled you or it took you off of where just a dead period took the team down, to the fact that it now looks like if y'all get a bad call, it just makes you matter. I mean, it just, I mean, it's, it just makes it more. And it seems like to me there's a level of maturity change there in that you're just not going to let anything get in your way and there's no more of this feeling sorry for ourselves and having a down period, it seems like nothing takes y'all off, off of your edge now. Well, you know, it's funny. Coach Spangler brought that up in a team meeting. And, um, you know, we talked about I remember going after the end after that game. And, you know, at the time, he didn't know the total ins and outs of what had happened. But I do know this. We, regardless of what had happened, we didn't respond very well to it. And certainly it was a huge part of that game. Uh, and, I, you know, I think we just made, a, as a team, we just made a big deal that, we're not going to make excuses. You know, we own it, and we're going to move on. And I really think we have. I think that in the combination of we've been in so many, I, I told them last week, 60-minute football games, you know. And I think I was kind of 66 out of nine and probably now seven out of ten. You know, you, you can draw it like you want, but what we've, had to, we've had to hang in there and fight and find ways, and we've done it in lots of different ways. Uh, I thought that was one advantage we had a week ago because they hadn't been in those games. Uh, even maybe a couple of their two losses, they weren't really in 60-minute games. Uh, so, I, you know, I think it's sad it's having, having older guys. we got a pretty mature group. Um, and, again, you know, at the end of the day, it's about preparation, you know, going back and preparing and, and then being able to go out there on Saturday and execute and play at a high level. But, again, the, just the, the, the physicality part, um, you know, the mentally, physically tough, that's just something we have to be about around here. And, um uh, and again, I've said it. We we got some talented guys. We do, uh, but there's not a whole lot of people we go out there and just out talent. You know, we got we got to go play really well together, complement each other in all those phases. And and but just going back to your question, I just think it's just you know we, we had to own that one, and uh, and we moved on, and I think we've responded pretty well. Matt, back to your comment about being aggressive. Um, Back in the old days when you first got here, uh, there was not nearly the depth along the offensive. It seems like you've been here forever. Not nearly the depth along the, the defensive front. And now there's so much depth that sometimes it looks like a hockey line change. You know, three or four guys in, three or four guys out, even with uh, J.J. still being out and, and lost for the year. How much on Saturday against Mercer did that help? Because from first play to last play, it was relentless. You were in the backfield the entire game. You know, <laughs> me and Kujo, we get mad at Coach Lewis. We're like, Coach Lewis, leave us in there, leave us in there. But by the fourth quarter, we're thanking him because we're fresh because of how much we rotate and how much trust we have in that second unit to, you know, you know, keep doing the job. But I think we're really when that really showed up was after they converted that first down, we've got a three and out the next series. And I think that speaks to how fresh we are throughout the game because of how much we rotate. So uh, Ryan, what is it like when you're out there on a, like a passing down, so to speak? Mm -hmm. Things break down and Tyler takes off. Yeah. How do you kind of – is it, you know, you've not really played with a guy this mm -hmm. with this much running ability before, so 
how do you kind of say, all right, he's taking off, I got to go into block mode? How, how does that kind of work? In, do you all practice that? It, it, yeah. It, it brings well, first of all, I get sometimes I get a little nervous because, you know, Tyler's a very competitive guy. Um, he's he's one of those guys. He's one of those quarterbacks. He's going to put his head down and try to truck somebody. You know, but we we try to tell him the last you know a few weeks to you know he needs to slide, he needs to save himself a little bit. Um, but I think you know when he starts scrambling like that, you know, trying to get open. But if he's just going to run it, then you know my coach tells you our job is to transition block. Um, we practice that a lot in practice, so I think that's just my job is just see if I can make a play for him by blocking somebody. Um, and if he has a good run, which I know he can't. I mean, he's a great athlete. I mean, he's able to – I mean, if you saw the touchdown scramble, which is amazing. Um, but, you know, he's just that type of guy. You know, he's an amazing athlete. And, you know, that's, that's all about, I can say about him. So, um, Coach, uh, you got Wofford coming up. Is it is it hard to keep this team focused on the task at hand because – there is, there's a future out there beyond Wofford. And also to that, how has Wofford changed? I mean, there's been drastic changes in what they do offensively. Just speak about that and, and what that challenges. Well, we'll see how the week goes. I mean, you basically, largely on what we did yesterday, we came back on Sunday, went back to our Sunday schedule, had a great day in the weight room. You know, it was, it was a little chilly out there about 5 o'clock last night. By the way, we had great practice. Uh, I don't know. I just think we've got a mature bunch that sees that. And, you know, we want to go win a ninth game. It's been a while since we've done that around here. So uh, I really think the focus, again, goes back on us. Um, I think they're thrilled to be at home. You know, I got a couple of little stats. You, you know, it's the first, first time in the six years we've been here, we played the last game at home. We haven't had the last home game the entire time. And I think it's our sixth game with Wofford. It's our second home game with Wofford. So go figure that one out. You know, they opted out of the spring season. So, mm-hmm. you know, but I, I really, you know, we, you know, one of, the, one of our goals you see over there on the board is win state championship. You know, you feel like if you can beat the other teams in, in our league in this state, then you're going to have a chance to have a good year. You know, so I think there's so much out there for us to play for. And, again, I think one of the things I love, you know, again, being here is, is different from even when I, when I was a place where you went to some bowl games. It's just – there's something cool about not knowing when the season ends, you know. So, uh, I think, you know, I think certainly we got a really good chance to keep playing. Uh, you know, their conference championship is still in play. Uh, you know, so I just think that's what our focus is. You know, I think when you look at them, again, I told you, I knew their schedule was front-end loaded in a big time, in a tough schedule. Um, you know, they came off of a tough year. Uh, but I thought they were really competitive a lot of those games. Um, and I just think they've gotten more and more comfortable. A new offense coordinator. I don't know Coach Watson. We have a mutual friend who I've said great things about him as a man, and obviously he's had a long track record being a good coach. And you can just see him as you watch him uh, get a little more comfortable, play better, uh, still playing hard. I think that's what you kind of judge it on. Um, they they even transitioned a little bit defensively uh, from what they were a year ago. Um, so I, you know. I, you know, I, I, I saw the onside kick one Saturday, and, uh, you know, we saw fake punt Saturday, so I think we're going to see a lot of different things come at us, uh, which is kind of normal that this situation, it's a rivalry game, just being our proximity. Uh, but, again, they're playing their best football of the year, but I think we are too, you know. So, it'll be, again, getting fun week of preparation, and we'll need to have a great week of prep, and I have no reason to think we won't have a great week of prep. And, um uh, but you know, just kind of excited to see what we can what we can do going forward. Ever since that Sanford game, that was uh, I sort of think that it sometimes it helps a team to be aware of its own mortality because it sort of gives you that we got nothing to lose. It mm-hmm. relieves tension in a way, and nobody has that more than Tyler Huff, who had everything in the world go wrong at PC. And one of the reasons he runs over people is he's just, I mean, you know, he's, he's got, he, I mean, this is a whole new world for him. Mm-hmm. But I just wonder if you think that a lot of times the best teams take a lump along the way and that's what turns them around. That's what makes them realize that if we don't play good. And I wonder if, that, if it had that effect on, on y'all. Whoever wants to answer it can. I would say um, 
most definitely had a big effect. But since I've been here, we've always kind of dropped one early in the season, I feel like. And uh, I just remember coming to the locker room after Sanford, and we already had it mapped out. We were like, all right, let's go. We're going to go 4-0 into the bye week, and then after that we're going to go undefeated. Literally, me, Hugh, Ryan talked about it because we knew it was do or die in the SoCon. You lose one, you can't lose another one. So you talk about knowing your own mortality. We knew, and we still know. So we've been, we've been in a playoff race since we lost that game. So, And I think just adding to that, like Coach said, you know, he, after that Sanford game, make no, we're not making any excuses. And, you know, we took that, and that's kind of been our mentality throughout the rest of this year. And, you know, we've just come together as a team and find a way to get the job done. So hey, got to keep going. Well, and I'll add this, too. You know, Tyler didn't play, Tyler didn't play in that yeah. game. <laughs> you know, could he have made a, made a difference? Maybe. I, I, I don't know. But, uh, but, again, he has just been such a great addition. Obviously, he's been a really good player. I, mean, I was looking there the other day. Actually, I think his yards per carry higher, is higher than Dom's. You know, and he just uh, – Dom never gets sacked. <laughs> That's true. And you know, fortunately, he hadn't been sacked a lot. But but just his willingness, you know, there, there's, there's guys that are good runners, but just his willingness to to go make some hard yards and do some different things. And, uh, man, he, he's a fun guy to watch. I, I think that's the thing that people say to me, maybe somebody that doesn't even follow us that much but have seen us play. And how many times that gets brought up about your quarterback. And, just, man, he's a fun guy to watch play. And, and he is. You know, he uh, – and it's been been a great leader for us too. Where, where does the uh, the pump fake on the touchdown run rate <laughs> in your mind as far as plays of the year? It's a pretty good play. You know, it's funny. I saw Engel Martin do that a couple of times, and it's funny. Engel Engel texted me after the game, and be, Dan, to be honest with you, you know, from where I was standing, I didn't look at the replay. I didn't really get the full effect of it till I saw it on tape. Listen to the radio call. Yeah. He, he, even did, and, he even did the point, too. He pointed and then pump fake. Well, yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, I saw Engel used to do some stuff like that. And I always tell Eng Engel was a very good runner. He maybe wasn't quite as willing. Um, but, uh, you know, and then Tyler, I did notice that I think he had a little something to say to the guy. Uh, and I asked him about it yesterday. And he said, well, Coach, you, you wouldn't be very happy. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, well, you handled it the right way. It wasn't real obvious. But he said, that guy's been talking to me the whole night. So, uh, but no, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty big, you know, just uh, – and, you know, it's funny, you know, he missed the easy – probably the easy throw on the first down, you know, and he missed Parks uh, on the little pop pass that we had wide open. And, and then, but, boy, you know, certainly that was a huge play, huge play in the game. You know, you think about that play, and then they drive down again, we block the, block the field goal. So, I think we went in the half with a little, little momentum. The other question I had was, was now five consecutive road wins – which now you're going back beyond 30 years for this school. To I was here. Mm -hmm. I was here. I actually had to look at it to see, see. I think it was over two seasons. Yeah, yeah the last we got four. We got sandwiched between, in the first sandwich between Clemson and the Gators, maybe, is what <laughs> it was. <so. laughs> but but the, the question is, from your standpoint as a player and a coach, what goes into being a good road football team? You know, I've been asked some questions about that. I, you know, I, th I just – I don't know, I, and I've felt like this way here. You know, when you go on the road, um, you know, I, it, I mean, it's you. It's you and your guys. You have less guys with you. Um, you know, yeah, I thought we had a great little crowd down there the other night. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, you're, you got a lot of things going against you. I just don't know if the focus is that much better. Um, I think maybe that's the thing that, that changes a little bit. Um, but, again, I'm just a believer. It goes back into preparation and, uh, you know, just getting getting dialed in. And, and you know, I, I think uh, there's certainly some places you go where on the road there's other things that influence you a little bit more. And obviously going to Clemson, that's a, that's a different deal just because some things that you deal with, not to mention the other team. Um, but I, I just think the focus has been that much better. And again, a little bit more of a, it's us, us versus them. And, you know, we're not relying on this, all this stuff to help us out. And um, certainly our guys have done a good job. That, and again, it goes back to our coaches have done a great job preparing our guys for those situations. Coach, it's funny you bring up Engel Martin last time. Um, that was the quarterback the last time this team had a play, home, home playoff game. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you know, if you look where you're ranked now, and if you take care of business on Saturday, you should make the playoffs. Um, and I know a lot more goes into it than just rank, but it would be a it would be a pretty neat thing for this group to be able to play at home. I think at the playoffs because that's not been done here in a while. 
Can you yeah, your thoughts yeah, on that? yeah, absolutely. And don't think we don't think about it. We don't talk about it a lot. We just, you know, it's been a little bit about this whole ranking all year. And, you know, let's control what we can control. Let's win games. And it'll kind of take care of itself. And, you know, I'm just a believer. And I think this football team's kind of proven itself. We got, you got to prove yourself every week. And we'll, we'll need to do it this week. And it'll be a big challenge against a good Wofford team that's playing really well. But um, I think we're a team that's got a chance to be a, be a seeded team. Uh, and I mean, I think that's kind of drives me and uh, having a chance to get a bye. I've been part of those too. And that's a big advantage when you can do that. Uh, you know, and so I, I just, uh, so it's again, what are you putting on tape today? And what kind of, what are you going to put on the tape on Saturday when you go play? And I think that's kind of what focuses, you know, but, you know, for me and being a grad, being a part, you know, of, of this place for so long, you know, I want that for our school, you know, or, our alumni, particularly our, the old players, you know, guys that came before us. I think that's vastly – I could – obviously, number of texts I got after that game, really the last couple of weeks. You know, winning does lots of great things for lots of people. It does, uh, you know, energize a lot of folks, and, which is a good thing. And uh, But, no, I'm certainly excited about having a chance to keep playing. You know, and, again, that's what you – really – ultimately, that's what you get in it for. And, and you want to you keep – you know, you want to go do what you can do and, you know, win the championship and have a chance to keep keep going. And uh, I think that's what's driving us right now. Any final thoughts from Coach Hendricks, Matt Sajoka, Ryan Miller? Anything before we get into wrap-up mode here? No, again, I, I certainly appreciate you being here. We're excited to come back, you know. Uh, this time, I think this is week 15. 15 yeah. yeah, week 15 of practicing football. And, uh, man, it was funny. I mean, you, you certainly, I think we've all been parts of teams. Sometimes you get to this point, maybe things haven't gone as well. But it's been kind of interesting, the, the energy that I've kind of felt out of this group going forward. And I don't think anybody's in any hurry to stop practicing anytime soon. So we'll need to go have a great week of prep. And uh, got some cooler temperatures around here. Got a chance to be at home. Uh, so we're, we're excited about, about an opportunity and a uh, chance to go play again. Well, as we get set to wrap it up, I'll just remind our fans that it's a huge weekend for Furman Sports. The men's basketball team is in the Charleston Classic, playing their first game at 11.30 on Thursday morning. Broadcast time uh, on the Fan Upstate for the radio broadcast, 11 a.m. And then games Friday and Saturday, depending on what happens uh, on that Thursday game. And then, of course, a noon kickoff for Furman and Wofford, the final regular season matchup of uh, this 2022 year at Paladin Stadium, 10.30 airtime for the Pepsi countdown to kick off. And then the playoff field will be announced on Sunday. So you can follow Furman's social media for all of that information. Clay Hendricks, Massachoka, Ryan Miller, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dan Scott. As always, saying God bless you so long, everybody. This has been a Jeff Schetzel and Hunter Reed production. <laughs>